Today with Joseph Prince. When you touch God's Word, not just God's Word, life to those who find them, but health, health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4.22, health to all their flesh. You know, when you take medicine, right? Many a times medicine, it gives you, it, uh, it helps resolve some pain or some condition, but then it's not health to all your flesh. In fact, it may cause a problem in another area. All right, you may go to the toilet more often or something like that, but, but only God's Word is medicine that is health to all their flesh. See, the problem with, with us Singaporeans especially, you know, you're, you're so smart. You people are so smart. And, and, and you tend to depend, depend on your smartness. No, thank God for, for, for education. Thank God for your experience. Thank God for your background. Thank God for whatever it is, help. But the thing is, depend completely in your heart on the Lord and His favour and His grace. The Bible says, as thy day, so shall thy strength be. Well, the science of the world tells us that the, the older you are, more days be behind, behind you than in front of you, they say that you decay. You, you, you get old. But that's what happens when you believe that and you're exposed to that and you've not been spending time in God's Word. You know, the flavor, the touch, the substance has not been imparted because you, you've lost touch with the Word of God. You're listening to the news. You're watching the news. You're listening to what people are saying. You're listening to experts saying that. And they have to say what they say because it's based on their five senses. It's based on their knowledge. It's based on their upbringing of their studies. Amen? Their background. But the thing is this, with you, when you spend time in God's Word, you have a different vision because like the Bible says, as thy days so shall thy strength be. More days, you have more days in front of you. Some, some of you are 20, 20 years old, right? You have 20 years in front of you. God says, as your days increase, then 40, now double. As your days increase, so shall your strength. This opposite from the world. It's opposite from the world. And Caleb is always a minority compared to even believers. Like you have the 12 tribes, you have the 12 leaders, but only one of them believed God that my strength is as strong as I was the day Moses sent me. Amen. And now he's 85. Wow. So you think about it. You know, the Word of God will change, cleanse your mind. Amen. So you don't accept things from the world so easily. Amen. Are you listening, people? Amen. You know, when, when the world says there's no provision, and by the way, the book of Esther, number one, you know, take your notes, just write down, the name of God is never mentioned. The name of God is never mentioned. You cannot find God or the Lord mentioned at all. In the book of Esther, it's one book in the Bible, the name of God doesn't appear. And yet, you see God behind the scenes. It is not so much a book of miracles, because miracles means God intervened uh, into an ordinary circumstance. But many, uh, many of the, the turning points in the book of Esther is very supernaturally natural. So it's not so much a book of miracles as it is a book of provision. God. God showing Himself as the God of providence. By the way, the word providence comes from an old Latin word, which is pro video. Pro, pro video. You all hear video, you all know, right? And the word pro in Latin means before. Video means I see. That's where you get the video. All right? That means God sees the need beforehand and God provides. Provision, even the word provision is vision, pro. Before it happens, God provides. You don't have to be afraid that, that life will take you by surprise. I, I, I must stick to the, to the lesson today, but you know, we are here to study the Bible. Amen. Another thing about the Bible is when you touch the Bible, you touch health. Yep. Proverbs 4.22 says, they, God's words, are life, say life, to those that find them and health, say health, yes. to all their flesh. Even when you don't understand, you open the Bible and you read a portion, it has a cleansing, it has a reviving, it has a rejuvenating, it has a supplying, it has a health-giving effect. Yes. Amen. And people who study the Bible, you can see their faces, their faces shine. Yes. Their eyes sparkle. They look younger and they are stronger as a result. But the moment you don't, you don't spend time in the Word, you're not in touch with the Word, you find your life just gets mundane, and you become natural. So the first thing we learn about the book of Esther is that the name of God is not mentioned. Okay? But the name of God is mentioned in the, in the acrostic. You know what's acrostic, right? Acrostic, like for example, grace. How you spell grace? G-R-A-C-E. 
So another way of saying acrostic is um, G, God. Gods. R, riches. A, at. C, Christ. E, expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's grace. So it's an acrostic. Can you see it? Amen? Do you know there are, there are four acrostics of the name Yahweh in the book of Esther? It's hidden. Now, how do you spell Yahweh? <laughs> Someone says Y, H. No, in Hebrew, it's going to be yud Hey vav Hey. But for convenience, we say Y, H, V, H. So you look up here. Now, remember like Chinese. Won't be hard for you to understand this. Hebrew reads from right to left. Okay, right to left. By the way, did I tell you that when you touch God's Word, not just God's Word, it's life to those who find them, but health. Health to all their flesh. Proverbs 4.22. Health to all their flesh. You know, when you take medicine, right? Many a times, medicine, it gives you, it, uh, it helps resolve some pain or some condition, but then it's not health to all your flesh. In fact, it may cause a problem in another area. All right, you may go to the toilet more often or something like that, but, but only God's Word is medicine that is health, Proverbs 4.22. Health to all their flesh. Amen. Every time you touch God's Word, it's health to all your flesh. So tonight, be expecting when you go out of this place, you're going out healthier, stronger, amen, and more prosperous in every area of your life. I don't mean money alone. I mean prosperous, amen. So that's, that's God's Word. Touch God's Word, you touch good success. Touch God's Word, you touch. Even if you don't, you don't understand. You all heard me share the illustration of the, the farmer who told his son to, you know, the son said, I, I don't understand. I, I, why should I read the Bible? I don't, I don't understand the Bible. The father says, okay, you know, son, you know, I understand what you're saying, but go get me some water from the river and uh, water the plants here. Uh, the son about to take the bucket. The, son, the father said, no, take this, this uh, you know, rattan, like, like a rattan basket, wicked, wicked basket. All right, take that and fill up water. The son says, Dad, this is not the whole water. Go, go ahead, just do what I say. So the son, son tried to bed. The river was nearby. Took some water and ran all the way back and he leaked. Dad, I told you. Dad said, do it again. So he did again, came back. Do it again, came back. Dad, I don't understand what you're trying to say. It cannot hold water. But the father says, look at the basket. You look at it. Look at how clean it is. So even when you don't understand God's word, it leaks. You feel it leaks. You don't understand. It's not retained. But look at how clean your mind is. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so say you'd Reading from right to left, I want you to memorize these letters. Very easy, okay, in Hebrew. Yud is the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Yud, reading from right to left. Yud, He, Vav, He. You know, I, I haven't even finished yet. This church is amazing. I love this church. Amen. And many a times you have to explain to people from the start. All right, for you, you guys help me so much already. So, this is... Pronounce Yahweh. We sang that song just now, right? Yud, He, Vav, He. Yahweh. And in the book of Esther, the name Yahweh is hidden in a cross-stick four times. All right? One time, it appears as I am. a -ye. I am that I am. Now, let me explain the cross-stick. In Psalms 96 verse 11, we have... The English text says this, Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Would you like your earth, your, your, where you are at, be glad? Your family area be glad? Amen? Heaven must rejoice first. Then the earth will be glad. God, that's always God's priority. Can I have a good amen? But if you look into the Hebrew, all right, reading from right to left, the Hebrew says, all right, let rejoice, Yishmaku hashamayim, Vetagel ha eretz. Yud, first one. He, vav, he. Without the Lord, your earth cannot be glad. Without the Lord, heaven cannot even rejoice. Amen. So it tells you straight away that this this is an acrostic. So although the name of God is not in the book of Esther, in your reading of your English or any other language. But in the Hebrew, it appears in acrostic form. And every time it appears, 
it is a pivotal point in the story. Every time it happens, it's really a game changer. It changes the whole, the whole scenario. Would you like to follow? Are you excited about that? Now, why are we telling you this? Because the same thing is happening in your life. God is working behind the scenes, but you don't like what you see. In the story of Esther, there was actually a, a, a madman, an evil man. I can't say he's a madman. He's, you know, the, the most um, craziest people, some of them are very intelligent in an in a ingenious, uh, in an evil way. Like Hitler, he knew how to rally people to the cause. So they're not mad as like, you know, you see people losing their minds. So there was a man called Haman. He's an evil man. And you see the hero of the story here, Mordecai, a type of Christ. And of course, the heroine, which is Esther. Esther, whose name is in the Hebrew, Hadassah. Hadassah is myrtle tree. But they changed her name to the Persian name because they were, they were in Persia. And her name became Esther, which means star. And she's the star of this story. The real star is God, of course. So why is it that God doesn't reveal His name? Why? In this book, why didn't God reveal His name? During this time, Israel was not in a place where God wants them to be, right? They are in captivity. Remember the story of how they, they worship other gods than the God that brought them out of Egypt, than the God who opened up the Red Sea for them, than the God who gave them all the land flowing with milk and honey, and they started uh, uh, sinning against God and God sent prophet after prophet. Some of them, they killed the prophet and all that. And God says, finally, God says, this is it. I'm going to send you one last call. If you repent, all right, I will restore everything. But they refused and they went into captivity. Then the times of the Gentiles started. The head of gold, the breast of silver, all the way down to the feet. One day I'll teach on that in detail in the, in the vision of Daniel. Or rather the vision of Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel interpreted. And uh, it's the times of the Gentiles. We are still in the times of the Gentiles. We are now in the feet area. So it's very interesting. Israel is supposed to be the, the, the nation that leads all other nations. One day they'll be when Jesus comes back. He will rule from Jerusalem. So that prophecy will be fulfilled. But because of their sin, they were suspended. And the times of Gentiles began with Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Uh, you, you can read this in your history book. The time of Gentiles began all the way until a European, a revived, revived Roman Empire in Europe. All the, uh, now, if, in fact, you can't say Europe because the revived Roman Empire covers the entire Middle East. Even Israel is under the revived Roman Empire. Actually, talk about it. Then it, Iran, Iraq, and all the rest. So from here will come the Antichrist. I, I, I can't tell you where is it, is it exactly, but... It's from the previous Roman Empire. He's going to appear and he's going to bring peace, supposedly world peace to the, uh, and all the questions that the world has. He seems to be very brilliant and all that, but his, his whole purpose is to annihilate the Jews as well as Christians. Now, we won't be around because we are raptured, because we attend Bible study. <laughs> so, like when Jesus told the Jewish people about AD 70 in Luke, he told them, when you see the army surround Jerusalem, you see the Roman army surround Jerusalem, right, because of, of the rebellion of the people, they laid a siege. They still allow people to leave because the, the fewer people there are, the faster they will fall. Less army to fight, right? They allow people to leave. Jesus said, when you see the armies surround Jerusalem, Jesus says, flee to the mountains. Guess what? That happened in AD 70. All right? And those Christians who remembered what Jesus said, or even before AD 70, they, 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 they realized it's happening. The moment the, the siege is late, they fled the country. Not a single believer died. Do you know that? So this is, a, this is a prophecy. To know it beforehand is to be forearmed. Okay, let's go into the Word right now. Uh, the story of Esther. So Esther, she is the... Her parents died and Mordecai took care of her. Mordecai obviously is a very elderly man, and he took care of her. And the time came, chapter 1. Um, all the Indians are going to love this. Chapter 1, verse 1. It came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This was the Ahasuerus who reigned over 127 provinces from India. And all the Indians said, Amen. 
to Ethiopia. So India is mentioned in the Bible. Do you know China is mentioned in the Bible also? All right, you can do a search. It's called Sinim, S-I-N-N-I-M. Im is just plural. Sin, S-I-N, is where you get chin later on. So the Bible prophesies about his people coming back from the land of China as well. Anyway, India is here. Good. In those days when King Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Sushan, the citadel, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast for all his officials and servants, the powers of Persia and Media, the nobles and the princes of the, of the provinces before him. He showed the riches of his glorious kingdom, the splendor of his excellent majesty for many days, 180 days in all. And by the way, at one time, don't forget, after King Nebuchadnezzar came the Middle Persian, the, the breast of silver of the vision of the, the, that Daniel interpreted for Nebuchadnezzar, the times of Gentiles, they reigned across all the way from northern uh, uh, Africa, Ethiopia, all the way to India. There's a wide compass of land. And many other lands were, were undiscovered during that time. Okay, so they were the, they were the uh, um, ruling power of that day. So this king, he was inviting everyone to come to his uh, place in Sushan. If you, you can actually look, look up this in, uh, on, on YouTube as well as documentary channel. It's, today it's called Susa. It's a story of Susa. S-U-S-A, <laughs> Sushan. All right? And uh, in fact, you can see, literally you can see they, they have unearthed They've unearthed the palace. Of course, you can't see the structure anymore. You can see the ground though. And in chapter 1, it talks about black and white marble. I have seen in my own eyes, one of my missionary friends in the 90s, he went down there, he took a picture of him standing on the black and white marble. He showed it to me. And you see, you can see, and it's in chapter 1, it talks about the black and white marble flooring. So uh, the, the, the palace has been uncovered. Okay, so it is still there. If you're king in, okay, studying and all that, not now, not now of course, but it's, it's Susa, okay, which is Shushan, ancient Shushan. And the story happened there. So the Bible tells us during this time he was eating and all that, and it was 180 days of celebration. Can you imagine not? All kinds of food. And the Bible, the Bible says that they, have, he, they were drinking from, they drinking wine from goblets of gold, vessels of gold. So finally, after 180 days was over, he has a special party thrown for his special friends in his palace garden for another seven days. On the seventh day, he invited his queen. He said, go get my queen because he was so proud of her beauty. And he says, let her put on her, her, her crown when she comes. So they went to get her, but she said no. She said no to her husband. <laughs> and this is where the story gets exciting because long before the evil happened, God was arranging circumstances for so she said, no. And the king says, what? And his, his wise men were around him. He says, do you hear that? Then the wise man says, king, if this is not handled, all the women of the entire kingdom of Persia will not respect their husbands when they hear this happen. <laughs> so let's follow the story. Drop down. If it please the king, they said, let a royal decree go out from him. Let it be recorded in the laws of the Persians and the Medes so that it will not be altered that Vashti shall come no more before King Ahasuerus and let the king give her, give her royal position to another who is better than she. So you know who is that, right? Esther. So God was working behind the scenes already. And uh, drop down. When the king's decree which he will make is proclaimed throughout all his empire, for it is great, all wives will honour their husbands, both great and small, and the reply pleased the king. Now, this is a turning point. Okay, this is a turning point. Look at the, the phrase, all wives will honor, and look at it in the Hebrew. He vekel hanashim yet no, which is to give from Nathan. Okay, look at this. Can you see yud he vav he in reverse? Okay, yud he vav he is in reverse. Now, we say, no, it's English, it's correct. It's forward. But remember, Hebrew reads from right to left. So it's reverse. You know why is it reverse? Out of these four acrostic, listen, two are reverse, two are forward. When it's forward, God is ruling directly. When it is reverse, He's overriding, He's overruling. And you see right now, He's overruling, deposing Queen Vashti 
preparing the place for Esther, who will be in a position to help her people. Long before you have a need, long before the devil plans any evil against you, God has the provision. God sees beforehand. Can I be good? Amen. Amen. All right. So it's a turning point right down here. So now the call is, is made. The queen is deposed. I'm sure she regretted a lot. Okay. And, um, and, and a call is made. The king wants to find a wife. So all the women of the province and the entire province, they, all, they were all summoned to, to come to uh, 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 Shushan, the palace. And uh, let's follow the story. Okay. Now when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the women, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. Now, if you read earlier, the Bible says she was, she was very beautiful. And yet, the Bible says that she obtained favor. I want to say this. Those of, those of uh, you, Pastor Lawrence, listen, who are good looking and all that, or you are pretty and all that, chances are sometimes you depend on that to help open doors instead of depending on favor. Even though Esther was beautiful, so were other women also. The way to stand out is always God's favor. Amen. God gives favor. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? You, are, you are new to the business. There are many others who have, who have made their mark long before you. From their grandfather to their father to hand it down to them. And you are new to the business. They, they've been there for... But you know what? Favor will make the difference. Amen. If people like you, people like you. Amen? If you read the entire thing, you find that uh, it talks about the women who were brought there. Before this, they, they, they see the king, they actually uh, bathe in perfume for six months. <laughs> and then another perfume for a number of period of time also. And uh, so the, the, the whole thing is uh, it's just amazing. It's very elaborate, very prosperous, very lavish. So the Bible tells us to drop down. Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the 10th month. And the king loved Esther more than all the other women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So once again, you have grace and favor, which was my first seminar or conference that I did for Hillsong Church. It's called grace and favor. Amen? And you, tr you put your trust in God's grace and favor. You go places. Amen. Amen? Doors will open. Don't depend on your smarts. See, the problem with, with us, Singaporeans especially, you know, you're, you're so smart. You people are so smart. And, and, and you tend to depend on, depend on your smartness. You depend on your, your experience. No, thank God for, for, for education. Thank God for your experience. Thank God for your background. Thank God for whatever it is. Help. But the thing is, depend completely in your heart on the Lord and His favor and His grace. Dear friends, as we celebrate Christmas this month, Wendy and I pray that you experience the Lord's love like never before. Christmas is all about Jesus, about the amazing grace and abundant life He came to give you and me. That is why this month, I'm making my book, Grace Revolution, available to you for a gift of any amount. It is our way of saying thank you for helping us take the gospel of grace around the world. We love you and we believe this resource will bless you and anyone you give it to. We want you to experience the life-changing grace of our Lord Jesus in every area and have a personal grace revolution. That's right. The powerful truths in this book have set so many people free and helped many pastors and leaders better understand and share the gospel. That is why we are offering it for a gift of any amount this month because we know it will be a practical blessing to you. So do request this great resource for yourself or as a gift for your loved ones this holiday season. Have, have a, a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Christmas. Today, as a limited time offer, receive Joseph's life-transforming book, Grace Revolution, as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry. In this book, Joseph shares five powerful keys that will help you experience the power to live above defeat. Find out how you and your loved ones can live the victorious life that God has called you to when you get Grace Revolution for yourself or a loved one today. 
Respond now and we will also send you a bonus 2019 wall calendar. Also, go deeper in understanding the Word of God when you request this special bumper collection for a specific gift to the ministry. This extensive collection contains seven DVD box sets, including Secrets of the Tabernacle Revealed. Find out how much God has completely forgiven you and wants to bless you through this revelation-packed study of the biblical tabernacle. In this powerful resource, Joseph Prince reveals God's desire for you to draw close to Him and allow Him to provide for you, heal you, and hold your life together. Get Grace Revolution and these other exciting resources today. Visit josephprince.org or call us toll-free at 1-877-901-4300. I grew up going to church and for a long time I never really believed everything that I heard. Grace Revolution um, by Pastor Prince really spoke to me just from the very first chapter opening it up right away and seeing that it's not about a teaching, it's not about a practice or something that we have to do in our life, it's about a person and it's about the person of Jesus. It takes our focus off of our circumstances and fixes our eyes on Jesus. And He truly, the message of grace, uh, in Grace Revolution is taking Jesus and putting Him as number one. And I think that's the biggest thing about Grace Revolution in our life. Our marriage go from almost divorced to a really amazing blossoming marriage. I would say that we have a far better life than I could ever have imagined that we would have had. Um, far better life than I thought was possible. This journey of grace has changed our lives forever. And I'll never be the same. Next on Joseph Prince. These people believe God is working behind the scene, even when superficially, Outwardly, you see things are going against you. And people that are not supposed to get promoted, get promoted. And then you are, you are told to go. You are retrenched. God has something better for you. You've got to believe that. God is positioning you. God is getting, God getting you ready not to face something that company will face or whatever. God is behind the scene. If you think tonight is wasted time, let me tell you this, waiting on the Lord is never wasted time because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Even the youth shall faint and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord will mount up with wings as eagles. Joseph Prince Ministries is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible for the amount that exceeds any fair market value of the materials you receive from us. 